we are here to talk about some plants. It's plant time. <laughs> uh, I'm Christina, uh, pronouns they or she. I am the uh, A content, not the content producer, A content producer at Twitch team uh, for GGC. Um, and yeah, how about you? Hi, I'm Julie. I do so many things at Geek Girls Con. I couldn't even say anymore. Um, <laughs> right now, it is prim primarily I handle all of the putting together of our accessibility and interpreting content, so making sure we're accessible for deaf folks and also all kinds of other folks. And I also am handling a lot of our planning around COVID-19. Yes, awesome. And you've been doing good work. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's been a it's a, it's been a lot. <laughs> That's its own whole stream. Yeah. Uh, um, Let me know if you want a COVID stream. Please don't. <laughs> You're like yes. Let me know. Uh, hi, Apocalypse. Julie, the Plant Whisperer. Yes. Exactly. Uh, we've got a few questions that Janae has kindly provided to us that we can kind of just like work our way through or we're phoning in a little with that. So, <laughs> uh, so we can just start off and, uh, get into it and yeah, it sounds like kind of just, it's just a chat. We'll talk about what, what, what our deal is with plants. What, what's the deal with plants? We'll find out. Um, what's the deal with <laughs> um, and if you have any questions about a plant or anything, uh, I have my favorite what's the deal with plants websites ready so you can uh, ask a question and I can find it. Heck yeah. All you right. Can answer it. Yeah. The answers yeah. are overwatering your plants. Water <laughs> them less. All of the answers. All of them. Uh, so yeah, and, and we can also, yeah, um, if you want to put, oh, well, you can try to put the link in chat. It might not let you put the link in the chat because we have, to, we're, unless I approve it or something, but, um, but I can put the link in chat if we need to. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, so first question, how would you describe your relationship with plants? <laughs> how would you describe your relationship with plants? <laughs> Uh, wow. I feel like, uh, tentative, um, uh, oh, what's the word? Um, uh, um, a truce. I feel like I'm at a truce level with plants because it used to be, and you used before we came on stream, the word, you know, you were joking about it being adversarial. It used to feel very adversarial in my case, uh, because I just did a very bad job, didn't know anything about them. I feel better about them these days <laughs> in terms of raising, yeah, nurturing plants at home. Uh, I, um, I don't know. It depends on the plant for me. So I have a couple of plants that are very near and dear to my heart. Um, and I have a couple of plants that I'm trying to give away because I want them out of my house. They need to leave. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, I don't know. I like plants because they are something to take care of. That's not like a cat so if the plant dies it's not like oh i killed this animal it's like oh the plant died go buy a new one it's fine mm -hmm. um and they're kind of fun to do science on i like to put them in different parts of the house or try different things to make them happy and if i can't make them happy i give them away on buy nothing and so it's like I like plants. Plants make me happy when I look at them, but there are some plants where I'm like, get out of my house. Like, <laughs> I am done with you. You need to leave. Your whole vibe is bad. Um, I'm curious which ones those are for you, oh right? or at least rec recently. Not recently. Well, yeah, recently. Okay. So there is this plant that's got not a great name, but a lot of people now are calling it a wandering jewel. Mm. It is. Scientific name is the one I use. It's a Tradescantia zebrinia. Mm. And they are a tropical plant. I've actually found, taken pictures of them growing naturally on the ground in Hawaii. Oh, cool. They're like 
Yeah, they're uh, like a flowering vine kind of thing. They're purple, they're pink, they're so pretty. <laughs> um, but they get leggy and their leaves get crispy. And so I am constantly feel like this effing plant. I constantly feel like I'm pruning it and then propping it and then pruning it and then propping it. And then it's a lot of dirt. And I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of this crispy little plant in my house. So what I'm doing right now is I actually bought a bunch of LECA. It's like an expanding clay balls that you can use as um, a medium mm. replacement for dirt. Like instead of growing, you're having your medium be like soil. It's the clay balls. Mm. And I'm hoping that it makes the like, pruning and propping and pruning and propping experience like way less frustrating because like then it's less like trying to dig little holes in a giant plant and I just oh I'm so mad at it um the original plant that I yeah wandering dude that's what a friend of mine calls Uh, my friend who introduced me to this plant uh names all of her plants and I name all of my plants me too yeah, and she named her Sophie, so I call them all Sophie, but, like, no one gets it because no one knows my friend, but they're all Sophie. <laughs> that anyway, sense. yeah, um, the original plant that I was like, this plant has got to leave my house was this pothos I got from a friend of mine two and a half years ago, and, oh, my God, nothing I did. And pothos are, like, super easy to grow, but nothing I did made this thing happy. And it got to this point where I was like in the middle of COVID stressing out about my relationship with this pothos. And then I just remembered that like the great thing about plants, you can just get rid of them. And so I got on by nothing. And I was just like, for the love of God, somebody take this pothos, get it out of my house. And somebody was like, I love pothos. And I was like, great. Something for everybody. Go. Um, <sighs> Yeah, that's my very emphatic, like, I love plants, but also I love that, like, you can get rid of them. Yeah, that's fair. You know, and I feel like maybe your experience level lends itself to that because, like, I'm so new to it that this last year or so is, like, pretty much when I started to get good. And I felt like I had a couple die when we had freezes twice and I had put them back outside thinking we were past it and it froze they died and I felt terrible and I was like, oh, my work is for nothing. And so like, I haven't quite adapted to that point of like, it's okay if they die. I'm just like a failure. (laughs) You're not a failure. Like the whole thing about plants is that like they grow in an environment, right? But like your house is like your environment. It's not the plant's environment. It's your environment. And if like the plant is not matching your environment, like just out in nature, sometimes you just gotta go. (laughs) <laughs> it's like your house they're living there yeah that's fair yeah yeah we have to try to get them adapted to our our environment as best we can mm-hmm. uh, what was your first um, plant my first plant is i still have it and i don't know hey. how this plant survived grad school and i just i don't know how this plant survived grad school like wow. this plant has just been through a lot um I got a, they're called a dumb cane. They're Diffenbachia. Hmm. And they are a, I call it my poison jungle plant because it's a toxic plant that you have to like wear gloves when you prune it kind of thing. Whoa. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and his name is Scott for Scott Summers. And, uh, I got him on, cause I was a sign language interpreter for a decade. And I had different contracts with different schools. And I was leaving a really great living situation and kind of like taking a leap into a brand new living situation, which was also turned out to be pretty great. But like, it was very like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Mm-hmm. How am I going to live my life? I was moving in to be the live-in caregiver for a deaf woman with developmental delays. Mm. And um, so I was moving out of living with like two of my best friends into this kind of like, oh, what's going to happen living situation. And on like the last day of school, one of the teachers just like handed me this plant. And I was like, I don't know anything about plants. That's a- at all. 
That's a wild for a plant for somebody to hand off. Here's this toxic plant. Yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't know what it was. I had to spend like hours on the re- internet finding out like what kind of plant it was. I was like, I don't know. Uh, and so he and I have been through a lot together. He was like my first plant and I put him in a pot that was way too big. And then I figured out you had to sh- put him in a pot that was smaller and then grad school happened and he never got watered. And I basically like cut him. He was like all leaning over to the side and was like sad. And so I basically like propagated him and then yeah, and now he's back. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that's great that he he made it. Your Dracenia lived. Yay! Oh, I'm so happy. I didn't know he lived. That's so great. Ugh. I feel like this is no. one of our first like on stream like live stream updates. So on a, a past yeah. stream of like it's a development. It is a development. That's so great. Nothing made me happy like seeing those Legos and those roots. I was like, this is. This is a dream. I love this. It made me so happy. I'm so glad he's doing better. That's so great. That's awesome. Yeah, my um, my first one is behind me up there, but it's not doing so well at the moment. But it's a um, let me see if I hold my mics in the way. But there, it's a maiden air fern up there. Oh. Um, I don't know if it's Commander, but yeah, but um, like she was pretty good. Her name is Seely, um, and she was doing good for a long time in the very sp- specific so- spot where I had my desk set up. And when I like that one, I know your advice is don't overwater, but the, that freaking plant, that one oh, loves ferns. water. Yeah, <laughs> ferns, all bets are off. Like yeah. ferns need so much water. I hate ferns. <laughs> And well, in a weird way, it was actually a really good first plant because it would to be fussy over, you know, it's like to have it mm-hmm. on my desk and see it all the time and water it constantly, knowing that that it wanted to be constantly watered. It yeah. was good for somebody who was in an anxious plant owner state. Like, so, yeah. One of the something I was on the phone, I was outside. I was in the neighborhood that's like near the Woodland Park Zoo because I just gotten finished going to the zoo. And I was on the phone with a friend of mine who was going through a really bad breakup. And I watched this guy uh, walk out of his house holding this, like, dead fern. Oh, no. (laughs) Open his compost and, like, throw it in and then slam the compost. And I started, like, cracking up while she's, like, sad. Oh, no. she's like, well, I'm so sorry. I was like, I'm sorry. I just watched this guy throw away a fern. And, like, that's what you do with ferns. You throw them away. They're annoying. Uh, I like And she was like, you do throw away ferns. I like ferns. I'm glad you like them. I'm glad you like them. <laughs> well, now you know who to give your buy nothing ferns to. <laughs> it sounds like you won't be buying them, but. <laughs> uh, okay, so Janae's next question for us was, how do you nurture nature? How do you nurture nature? Hmm. I don't mow my yard and let the bees have it. There you go. I do that intentionally. Certainly not because I'm lazy. <laughs> uh, how do you nurture nature? Uh, you know, I was trying to think I would answer that. Um, I like to get outside of the plant, our, our home plants. I mean, I, I definitely try to practice like good care when I'm out in like hiking and stuff like that. And since I do some mm-hmm. like foraging, I do sustainable practices. That's what probably the thing I would say. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a bigger, like broader question. Yeah. Uh, she's trying to buy less stuff. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, that does it too. Yeah. Uh, what is the coolest plant you own or have seen in the wild? Depends on your definition of cool, I guess. Hmm. I went to the Redwoods for my honeymoon, and oh, that was really cool. I'm going there soon. Oh, it's so, so fun. Excited. Where are you going? Uh, the northern, the northern Redwoods. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like, I'm trying to remember the Crescent City area, like south mm-hmm. of there. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. It was just mind blowing. I thought it was gonna be like peaceful, like. Oh, I got married, and now I'm in the woods. It's so peaceful. I feel so at peace. Instead, I wandered around for three days shouting, like, look at that fucking tree. Oh, my <laughs> God. 
look at that tree. Ah. It's so it was just like mind blowing, mind blowing. That's amazing. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. That sounds awesome. Mm-hmm. Oh, mo- coolest plant I've seen here. What co- coolest plant I own and or have seen? Hmm. Um. I mean, out in nature, I've seen a lot of weird and unusual plants, but most of them, I wouldn't be able to tell you their names. Uh, Where do you see weird and unusual plants? I I mean, just, well, just, you know, I mean, out in the forest, I mean, out in the Pacific Northwest, we've got a lot of stuff, but there's like, um, I'm trying to figure out like names for a lot of the like ground cover plants that I don't necessarily know names of. Um, I've seen like, there's like uh, the Pacific water, what's it, watercrest or water, mm-hmm. yeah, that's out there. Um, uh, the, I mean, gosh, I, the ones I keep thinking of are like forageable like things. I'm like, you could do like, there's like the nettle plants. There's, uh, what's a cool plant though? Gosh, I don't have anything that's coming to mind right away. Washington state is one of two states where, uh, venus fly traps grow in the wild oh yeah you know what i haven't seen the i haven't seen venus fly traps but i have seen the other carnivorous one the sun sun do or sun do you know what i'm talking about yeah the one that's like a tunnel like a um no it's like a little guy with little little droplets on it and it's very small and it's actually kind of um it's threatened and endangered here and i did see that out and about and that one um yeah it's very tiny and yeah you didn't want to step on it or pick it or anything like that i'm trying to remember what it's called it's like sun S- sundew i'm being yelled sundew from the other room i think I haven't, I haven't seen it i think it's so weird because the two places that venus fly traps grow is like pacific northwest like specifically washington like the coastal areas of washington and then the coastal areas of south carolina Oh, that's so weird. That's so strange. They, isn't it? They like like brackish, rocky areas. I don't know. I've always wanted to own a Venus flytrap, but then everyone's always like, you have to keep track of when, like, you have to feed a different, like, mouth, a different trap every time. And I'm like, I will never remember that ever in my life. Yeah. Sundew chat says sundew is carnivorous. Yeah, Isn't that's that what I was saying. Me? Yeah, like it, it's the other. It goes with. I don't know why we have like so many. Apparently, so many carnivorous plants here. Uh, it's it's wild. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a it's a cute little one though. Um, also, I want to look it up. Can I look it up? Yeah, I, I was gonna. I was like seeing if I could just drop it over our scene somewhere and just like very sloppily drop a drop it into my scene but i have to figure out how first so <laughs> uh so maybe you'll find it before i get, get oh there. my god that's weird that's weird looking it's a weird looking little one it's much smaller than it looks like you're from your very first picture but yeah um it's just does the whole sticky thing drosera it's got those mu- mucilaginous yeah. mucilaginous um Ugh. glands uh, i'm gonna keep an eye out that's so gross ew <laughs> It's it, it's very tiny, at least. I am like kind of afraid of things that are underwater, mm. and this looks like it belongs underwater. And so I'm looking at, I'm like, ooh, I don't like this. Ooh. It's gross and kind of scary. Uh, that's fair. Yeah, I wonder if that's why it's threatened. Maybe everybody just stomped on it. <laughs> they I were like, I hate not. it. I hope not. Do I? Do, I actually don't really know why. I'm. I don't know why it's threatened, or at least that's what I learned from the person. It was like part of a class, and somebody had said, and I'm I'm not sure if that's true or not. Um, so don't quote me. Um, Lure, capture, and digest insects. Gross. Oh, it's the loss of wetland habitat. So, so fun oh. fact, quote unquote, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, Ooh, oh yeah the largest genera of carnivorous plants with at least 194 species wow that's so fun okay apocalypse okay. uh red hot pokers i'm trying to think if i've seen those anywhere now i have to look that up i feel like and... looking up red hot poker oh actually it did pop up i didn't expect it to like you ex- you kind of expect searching red hot pokers you're just gonna get like mm-hmm. red hot poker pictures i see it oh. though I am also obsessed with those. They're very pretty. I like that. Apocalypse. 
GGC. I am also obsessed. They're my favorite color. Oh, uh, wild strawberries also grow up in like the subalpine Ooh. regions. Yeah, so I've All seen that. seen those, and they're so good. So That's good. So cool. Um, I don't think they're cool, but I'm currently waging war against dandelions. Oh. And I think it is kind of cool how good they are. Kind of cool and also infuriating how good they are at reproducing and how good they are at burying that like taproot yeah. in the ground. And if you think about it, like you pull it up, right? But if there's enough of the taproot left, they can just grow back up and then be a dandelion again. And I was thinking about this the other day because I'm like, there's no light or like anything down there that plants need to make food so like how are they making food how are they getting energy to grow and i was like that's really cool but also like get out of my yard yeah yeah i guess i could tie maybe maybe there's some kind of uh tie back into our month theme last month like a some kind of underground mycelium like mushroom mm. thing fungus thing going on that mm -hmm. giving them extra nutrients or something yeah all right, let's see. Why why do plants bring you joy? <laughs> it sounds like not always joy. But <laughs> I don't know. I like green things. Yeah, I think it's just very, just very primal to humans. We like, we like green. We like plants. It makes mm -hmm. us feel good. And we know it means that we're in a place that's got food and water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a... I don't know. It's just nice to have like a little bit of nature in my house. Yeah. It's good for our uh, mental health. Mm hmm. I am growing a bed of cat grass outside on our oh. balcony for the cat. And it's like also nice for me because I just look outside and there's like this little bed of grass. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It is so nice. It makes me happy. And it's like, oh, I intentionally grew that grass. It's not just like a weed. I think it's a very good idea to be growing your own because we've bought the little cat grasses mm -hmm. before and they die very quick and then the cats uh yeah destroy them so it was also expensive and i also wanted to get enough where she could like lay in the grass oh yeah and so i got like two little packets of seeds and put it in it was a planter that had mums in it but then i murdered the mums and i also <laughs> did not care because like i just took them from a friend of mine because she was like i don't want these mums anymore and i was like cool I'll take them. And then I was like, I also don't want these moms. And But it's like a nice big planter. It's like, it's like a nice big planter and she can like stretch out in it. And so I decided it was going to be her cat grass bed. That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. Uh, the next question was, have you tried growing fruits slash vegetables? What has your experience been like? Um... I've got some peas growing. I can't do a lot of vegetables uh, here because of the apartment mm -hmm. and all. But, yeah, I've got some peas, got some herbs. Um, yeah, the peas are taking off. So hopefully hopefully that'll be something. How, how about yeah. you? Uh, when I was a kid, my dad had a vegetable garden every year. Um, oh, nice. And we would grow, like, everything, like, bell peppers and cucumbers and I've always wanted to like do that again but I've never been in really in a like stable enough living situation to like figure out how to do that uh, um yeah just because of the moving thing but it's mm. on my list of things to do I have grown grown herbs and other than basil it's ended really well basil has not ended well I, I I hear that frequently about basil. I have not. I didn't try my hand at basil because of that. Yeah, I think the one thing that people miss about growing your own, like fruits and vegetables, or definitely like fruit trees, but also like vegetable plants, is that if one is really going, it's like way more than you can eat as like a human. Mm -hmm. Like if you get like. Like, I have a friend who every year ends up just giving away zucchini by the sack full because she puts, like, four zucchini plants in her pea patch. And it's just, like, way too much. And so it's, like, if you don't have, like, like, you need to have more than one plant to, like, make sure it takes. But if you have, like, two or three that take... You need to have a plan for, like, what you're going to do with it because it's yeah. so much. Yeah, that's and fair. 
especially with fruit trees, like if you have an apple tree and the apple falls on the ground, you can't eat the apple anymore. So it's like you actually have to like go up and pick the apple. Mm -hmm. Um, because once it touches the ground, it's like bacteria can get in it. It makes it like not super safe to eat. Mm. Um, and so it's like, you either have to like go and pick apples or you've got a yard full of disgusting rotten apples, which I've definitely seen living in Seattle. Yeah, I have definitely seen that too. Yeah. Uh, Did y'all grow? Chat, did you grow anything other than tomatoes? That Apocalypse says we get, oh yeah, gave away so many tomatoes partially due to pruning fails. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say like, uh, you know, at, at least there is the possibility of donating. Like my, my um, in-laws have a big garden and they grew, grow tons and tons of vegetables. And they, I mean, I think they donated like, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember it's just like a thousand pounds or something like it was a, some ludicrous number to their local uh food bank and like they always need fresh vegetables and fresh fruit there like that's the number one thing that they're always lacking so yeah i guess if anybody is looking for a thing to do with extra extra veggies it's a really really good place to take them that's a good call yeah yeah just be ready if you're gonna grow your own food just be ready have a plan don't be like i'm gonna grow i'm gonna eat everything i grow because you're not it's yeah yeah it's like with the herbs i'm realizing you know like this year you know before i've grown them and then been like i didn't use them really and this year it's mm -hmm. like okay i'm gonna dry some of them that's actually gonna oh, happen yeah. so that'll be nice are you gonna how are you gonna do that are you gonna get like a dryer or yeah like is there like a drying like how do you dry how does one dry herbs i don't know anything about that um so you can get like uh what we have is like a hanging mesh um it has like stacks like layers and you it, and you as long as you get like airflow and heat like if it's wet and gross and humid it'll get it you know it'll get gross and uh, you mm -hmm. don't want that but yeah you can absolutely just do free air um drying as long as it's all zipped up and closed up from everything um yeah you could also do like a dry like um an actual dehumidifier i guess but yeah that's that's the way we go for it so that's super cool yeah yeah and i mean so far i haven't really had any issues with anything like going funky so it's oh, been good true. yeah you we kind of that's think awesome. here in this area that maybe it would go funky but i guess you know if you're doing it the right time of year it's fine mm -hmm. yeah it's just not something i ever considered that's such a good idea yeah um Okay, let's see. What are okay? Well, we're getting towards the end of the questions. Uh, what are good starter plants? What would you recommend for a good starter plant? Um, it depends on what you want out of a plant. Makes um, sense. I actually, I was gonna pull up this website that I like, Apartment Therapy. They have a lot of good like. Here are the type of plants you need. I think for me, first, before anyone should get a plant, like they should first think like, what do I want out of my plant? Like, do I want something I have to pay a lot of attention to? Do I want something that I can ignore and it's going to exist and like live its life mm -hmm. and like we can coexist? Um, because like... Like you said, like your fern worked really well for you because you wanted something to water every day. And I think that's great. Um, I think, and also like looking at your environment, like you want to make sure that you're matching. I think the most important thing for plants is like match the light needs and the watering needs. And so, yeah. Um, I love, I think spider plants are a great first plant. My spider plant plant grows just no matter what I do to it. It just, he goes bananas and just like grows. Um, and I divide him about twice a year. I pull him out the dirt and cut him in half and give away half of him. And then <laughs> stick him back in the dirt and grow him again. Um, if you want something that's just going to be kind of like really nice and green, but you can ignore like succulents are really good because they just want a lot of sun and not a lot of water. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't recommend jade as a starter succulent. They get root rot like so easy. Mm -hmm. um, I hear people love pothos for a starter plant. I think they're <laughs> jerks. 
Um, I I have a uh, the one that I my equivalent to snake plant is my grape ivy plant, which is in, indoors and in a pot. I would not put the ivy outside or in a place where it could, you know. I think it would take over the world, to be quite frank, because um, mm-hmm. it is unkillable. Uh, it just takes over my entire living room. But at the same time, I love that because it's just it. We can we hang you know cords and then the, the it creeps down the cords and you mm-hmm. know it just means I get a little bit of a jungle behind you know you can't see it where it is, but you know behind my computer there. And so I get a lot of green in my site. So I would say that one's a really good one uh, if somebody just yeah. wants some green. Yeah. I love that. I might, ooh, I wonder if I could do that. Well, I got to move first. <laughs> oh, another good one calling yeah. out earlier. I think Dracenia is a really good starter plant. They're like kind of cool and weird looking. Um, uh, What kind of succulents are they? We'll get to that in a second chat. <laughs> We'll get to there. Uh, it depends. Uh, there's a lot of answers there. We'll get there. Um, yeah, I think Dracinia is a good one. Dracinia tends to be kind of hardy. They don't like being overwatered. Uh, or as I like to put it, they don't like getting their little feet wet. Um, but they're cool looking and they can like bounce back from a lot of a lot of neglect or a lot of overwatering. Like they bounce back pretty good. Mm. Um Okay, question. All my succulents end up getting so leggy. How can I avoid that? What kind of succulents do you have? Because it depends. It's a good question. I have one that is like that too, but I it was the only survivor of multiple succulents in one pot, and it has gotten leggy, but at least it's alive. But I am not sure what its variety is, and I don't I don't think I have a picture. So um okay, so yeah. All right. Well, then I'll just kind of walk everyone through some succulents. Does that sound like fun? Yeah, Uh, let's do it. Speaking of succulents in a pot. So I will, there is a succulent website where technically you're like looking at them to buy them, but it's a pretty good succulent identifying website. Like you just kind of look at it and flip through. Um, One reason why succulents, who you buy like you see the big pots at Costco that have like the snake plant and then the string of pearls and all those different succulents in it the problem with those is uh succulents have two different growing seasons there are summer growing succulents and there are winter growing succulents Mm. and if you put both of them in the same pot half your pot's gonna die Hmm. honestly um because when if basically if it's not their growing season you need to water them even less than you would normally water a succulent so like i have a string of pearls that i literally picked up off the floor of costco because it fell out of one of those pots it was just like a little strand and i stuck it in some dirt and the thing has grown Um, but those are winter growing succulents so during the summer i make sure it is like super duper duper dry before i water it Okay. But during the winter, whenever it's its growing season, I water it more frequently. Okay. Uh, jade is a summer growing succulent. So like right now, I am watering my jade every 7 to 14 days, depending on how much sun we've had. Oh, I think mine is a jade, too. I just looked at the picture. Yeah, I think Ooh, mine is a... Do you a... have it near? I can t- if it's uh, jade, I can... No, I don't have the. I don't have oh. mine out there, but I'm looking at the jade. I've, I googled jade to see it, and it looks similar to mm-hmm. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so jade is a little finicky. Okay. I love my jade. Um, They really don't like having their feet wet, and they need a lot of light. With jade, I tell people as much light and as little water as you can get. Okay. Um, They get root rot really bad. If their leaves start, if the leaves start getting squishy on jade and falling off really easily, that means it's got root rot and you need to get it out of the wet soil immediately, trim off the root rot, put it in dry soil, leave it for two days, and then try watering it again. I know this because I've had to do it several times because I give my jade root rot. Oh, okay. Um, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. They're, they're tricky. Jade can be a little tricky. Um, okay. So first thing you want to do is identify is it a summer growing succulent or a winter growing succulent. If you overwater a succulent during the wrong growing season, it's going to get leggy. Um, Another problem is we're in the Pacific Northwest. There is a really common type of succulent that people sell up here called Echevera, which looks like a 
it's like it looks like a little flower like a little green flower and it tends to be sold and be very like Hmm. its leaves are kind of pointy it's like whenever you're thinking like oh succulent oh yeah i see a picture yeah Mm echeveria yeah Mm yeah Okay. Um, we do not get enough light up here in the Pacific Northwest for Echeveria. Oh. It does not matter how much full sun you get it, they're gonna get leggy. I don't know if it's a, not enough light or if, like, as you go higher in the, like, as you go higher up, the angle of the sun changes, which means that certain sun's rays are not getting up here to us mm. in the Pacific Northwest. And I don't know if it's that or if we just flat out don't get them enough sun. So there are two things you can do with Echeveria. Uh, first is get a grow lamp and give it like grow lamp. Yeah, that was, a, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Or the other is you can literally cut the top off and just stick it in dirt and water it again and it'll grow root. That works. Which, which is what I do. Whenever I think that mine are too leggy and tall and I think they're ugly, I just like snip, peel off some leaves, put in pot, and then just continue on as normal and they tend to do pretty well with that huh cool yeah that that sounds more durable than i would expect for a plant i guess in general (laughs) it's just like just being able to just be like nope back in (sighs) yeah that's one of the things that makes succulents fun is they reproduce by like leave like their leaves can grow like a new plant so anyway that is your primer to succulent double check to see if it's a winter growing succulent or a summer growing succulent And then make sure you don't water it very much in not its growing season. That, that makes sense. Yeah. That's good to know. I would not have thought about them being like a mix of summer and winter. I learned that one the hard way, the very hard way. I had a whole, I did myself a cute little like succulent display in a little pot and I was like, it's going to be so cute. And then they all like. Just gone. Oh yeah. They, they died. Um, yeah grow lamps I, can i talk about grow lamps for a second because i've been like hardcore researching this yeah okay there is a world of nerdery around grow lamps like it's not just like i mean i think for succulents like whatever it's gonna be like you're gonna give them better light than they're gonna get in the pacific northwest but like for other plants it's like you have to make sure it's the right color and the right hurts and how far away and like put it on a timer and like the right bulb and I'm just like so into it and I'm like oh my god I want a grow lamp so bad but just like the amount of like nerdery research that can go into this and it's like you can spend like 50 bucks or you can spend like 500 dollars like there is no end to the amount of grow lamp you can do So I have been researching one. I think it's going to wait till we're in the process of like trying to buy a house, which is not going great because Seattle, but like whatever. Um, We have to move anyway. So I think after I move, I'm going to get, I'm going to wait till I get it after I move, but it's like, you got to make sure it's the right, like the light is the right color and has like the right frequency for what you're growing. It's so intense. I'm like, so about it. (laughs) Yeah, I have read the the like the I've seen a little bit of that about the different colors of lights and everything. It seemed it does seem a little complex. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, definitely get a grow lamp and let me know how it goes. <laughs> Apocalypse, GGC. <laughs> uh, okay, Janae questions. What are some plant care t- tips slash tricks you can share? So this is the general, the all-purpose question. Water your plants less. <laughs> the next question was, how do you avoid overwatering? Water your plants less. Um, how do you avoid? Well, when it, how do you water your plants? Okay, I have like a very specific system. How do you water your plants? Um, I mean, I just tend to look up their watering needs and kind of like gauge off of that. Like, uh, you know, d- the soil needs and the watering needs i 
usually it's like testing like putting my finger in the soil and checking mm-hmm. like how dry it is how a certain amount down and then it's like okay depending on what the plan is but um you know once it gets dry then to then it's like oh it's time you know um i don't know if that's correct uh but i don't i yeah that sounds great i just i have a very specific system my plants uh get watered every seven days i check my plants like literally every sunday i check my plants to see if they need to be watered and i do the whole thing of like sticking your finger in the soil and checking it that way but it's like i told a friend of mine i was like i only water my plants on sundays so if you need to be watered outside of a cadence of like every seven, 14 to 21 days, like you've got to leave my house because uh. you're getting married, you're getting watered on Sundays. Uh, and I think that's how I avoid overwatering is just by like having my schedule. And that means that there are some plants that don't get to live in my house because they needed like water every eight days and i was like sorry that's not (laughs) that won't work and eight days is not good i mean well and this is the thing it's like with my herbs i mean they do want like really regular water because they're out here in an east facing Mm -hmm. and like if i don't water them every couple of days right now they're just like Mm -hmm. i'm gonna die and 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 also obviously i talked about this one you know this one wants you to constantly keep it damp so like yeah i think if i had the kind that it, it sounds ideal to be in a situation where the but with with only every week because that would be mm-hmm. really really nice because otherwise it's like oh i have to go and check all of them and water all of them and so it would be less water usage too which is good yeah i don't know i just that was like i was like this, this is what works for me i it stressed me out to like have to think about checking my plants every day totally um, it makes it hard to when you have to go travel or something yeah Mm. yeah because I noticed that was one of the questions is like what do you do when you travel and it's like I water my plants before I leave and then leave yeah yeah um I I know that you know yeah for me it's like I asked I did ask friends who are already coming to look after cats to look after our plants a little bit um when it's when you have a lot of when they do need to be watered frequently um yeah, and other than that, some people also do set up, like, automatic watering kind of mm-hmm. systems, and I don't know anything about that. I've seen them in people's houses. Uh, I've not looked into them. I know that some people, like, fill up a bottle and stick it in the soil, but that always struck me struck me. That always struck me <laughs> as a way to, like, really overwater your plants. Uh, during COVID, I had to go home to Louisiana for, like, a month, and mm-hmm. I was, like, in the process of, like, writing out directions my like water every seven days direction Uh (laughs) for uh mikey my dude and then he just looked at me and he was like can michelle keep your plants (laughs) (laughs) and so i loaded them up in the car and i drove them to my friend's house and i was like can you just like keep my plants it's just a very stressful time for all of us that's fair that's fair and she was she was very sweet and kept my plants that's nice uh, uh, yeah, I think that, I and mean, that almost is it. Uh, what about plant care? Can we apply to other aspects of life? Uh, hmm. Uh, well, I, we sh- we probably are underwatering ourselves, so I don't know if that's a good application <laughs> in that case. Uh, I overwater myself. Do you? Okay, well, I, I, under- I, I underwater. I drink a lot of water. <laughs> Uh, that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing, mm-hmm. though. It's better than not being hydrated. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think uh, other plant things to apply to general life. I... Hmm. I mean, just paying attention, I guess. Like, yeah. Yeah. That, paying that... attention, like, I don't know. Thinking about your environment, like, Mm. is what's here working for me? Is it the fact, am I dying because, like, I'm bad? Or am I dying because my environment is bad? Oh, someone please clip that. (laughs) It's so good. Uh, That, yeah, yeah, that, no, really, though, that's very true. Yeah. That was Um, a very, very public health thing I just said when talking (laughs) about plants. Like... (laughs) follows me everywhere it's true though it's really true uh i mean it like it's it's when we feel bad a lot of times when we feel really bad there's something wrong 
there's something else going wrong, just like when our plants feel bad and when our plants are wilting and they're unhappy, they that's because something about, like you said, the environment has gone wrong or something mm-hmm. about behavior patterns has gone wrong where it's like, oh, I'm, I am overwatering this. And in ourselves, you know, that could be I am eating a ton of a food that makes me, ch- you know, really feel shitty and <laughs> and you know like that kind of thing or like just stuff like that i don't know where where it's just paying attention to patterns of i think i think yeah i think you're right and i think it's also like i don't know i feel like as humans we tend to like really judge ourselves and do a lot of like self shaming like oh this happened because i did bad but you would never well you would never, I sometimes do, you would never like look at a plant and be like, you're dying because you suck. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's how we talk about ourselves. Like, Oh, I am failing at this because like, I'm bad. And it's like, maybe it's not you. Maybe it's just the situation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I always try to like when, when friends are in that place and they're like, oh, I suck or I failed or whatever. And I'm always like, would you say that to me if I was doing that thing? And, mm-hmm. and usually, I mean, the answer is never like, yeah, I would totally say that to you. You suck. Like, they're not going to say that. They like to me, they're not going to say that. They're not, they're going to, you know, they're not going to say that to like a kid. They're not going to say that yeah. to a plant. Like, I mean, maybe of any of those things, maybe to a plant, we might be like, God, you suck. <laughs> but... Oh, yeah, that process I hated. I was like, you are dying. It is your own fault. I have done everything correct. You are the one with the problem. <laughs> yeah, so maybe to plants, we might say it. But still, you know, we generally, yeah. there is there there's a lot more leeway we're going to give that than we will ourselves in, in life. So, yeah, I think that's good advice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess this is a good opportunity for you to plug those, those links. What, what do you want to share? Um, if you need to, uh, troubleshoot plants, epicgardening.com is like the best plant troubleshooting on the planet. Okay. Epicgardening.com. Um, Mm-hmm. If you are on Facebook and you just have a plant and you're like, I don't know what this plant is doing and I need help. Um, Swanson's the nursery has a Facebook group that you've got to like read and like apply for. It's a private group, but they let, I mean, they let me in. So <laughs> <laughs> clearly they're not that discerning. <laughs> um, and they've always been really great. Um, I'm just going to plug Swanson's in general as like a good plant asking questions place. Every time I've gone in, they're great. They have a really good return policy. Before you bring home a plant, always quarantine it for 30 to 60 days to make sure it doesn't bring in any pests. And Swanson's will like, if you buy a plant from there and it has a pest, they will return it and replace it. Oh, good. Which is really nice. That's awesome. Um, general like descriptions of plants and like which plants you should buy apartmenttherapy.com I rely on them a lot Uh, they're not good for troubleshooting but they're good for like finding your next plant or like I live in this kind of lighting situation what is a good plant for me and then we kind of talked about this earlier but ASPCA.org has a really good list of toxic plants and whether they're toxic to cats, dogs, or horses. Oh, yeah, that's right. We were going to talk a little bit about the, mm-hmm. the toxic plant situation. If you have feline or doggo friends, or I guess horses, if you have horses, um, it's really good to double check that whatever you're bringing into your house is also safe for your little your little furry friends. Um she says as she has two of the most toxic plants for cats in her house. Oh no. Um, if you have a cat, I wanted to say this. If you have a cat, don't ever bring a lily into your house. Just like one whiff of pollen can like give them brain toxicity and they can like have a stroke and just like die. We don't want that. We want to take care of our little, our little furry friendos. Um, so yeah, I think that is important. You gotta, you gotta 
nurture yourself. You got to nurture your plants. You got to nurture your animals. I uh, have like a little daily schedule on it. And from 7 to 8 a.m., I have it marked as like, take care of living things. That's nice. Yeah. Myself, my cat. Tell the plants I think they're beautiful. I talk to them every day and tell them how beautiful they are. Oh, yeah. I love that. That's great. My plants do not get told that. Sometimes they, I make snarky comments to them. No, I, I do sometimes say, oh, you look good. But sometimes mm-hmm. it's wor- worry, worried comments. I'm a worrying mother, <laughs> plant, yeah, <that's>, plant caretaker. <laughs> that's very fair. That's very, <laughs> plants can, I'm like, overwatering and underwatering look like the exact same. And so sometimes it's just like, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> Tell me what you need, my precious babies. Yeah. Uh, oh, and if you find that you have a plant with spider mites, just set it on fire. Just take it out and just don't just set it on fire. I mean, you can get rid of spider mites. And I do have like two plants that if they got spider mites, I would actually like take the time to try and treat them. But spider mites are annoying and... uh don't don't um, they're annoying they're not great yeah the I've, i don't think i've had to deal with spider mites i had to deal with um what are they called the fun- fungus gnats or oh yeah yeah those are also yeah. not fun um but putting sand on top of the soil worked well oh that's mm-hmm. oh i didn't know that i, I fungus- yeah i get fungus i'm gonna try that next time i get fungus gnats i've had them on occasion yeah I've had thrips, but that got, I dealt with that. I mean, that wasn't too bad. Oh, that's good. Um, Yeah. Yeah, No, I had read like an article, you know, uh, the internet had a bunch of ideas and it's like, spray it with this, spray it with that and all of this. Mm -hmm. But then like, I found one article where it was somebody who was like a a scientist who was talking a little bit more about it. And they're like, yeah, I don't know about that stuff, but like put the sand, you know, put a layer of sand on the soil because like they're, that's the eggs in there and then they need to be able to like get, Mm out and mm-hmm. then reproduce more and then so it's just like if you can get that layer of sand on there that helps and i think i also had i, I think i double whammy and like sprayed it yeah. and then did that but yeah um that that's, helped it did it that's great i'm gonna remember that because i probably am gonna end up with spider mites not spider mites <laughs> uh fungus gnats fungus this gnats. summer because i've got one plant that every summer i get fungus gnats and it's annoying yeah 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 they, they like when they get dry for a long time and, and obviously if it's a plant that needs that then you can't do much mm-hmm. about that you know like if it wants to be drier but yeah when they when they're dry long enough then the fungus gnats are like cool this looks good and move in so mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah I think that was all our uh, questions. I don't know if, you know, I think we've just really got Apocalypse hanging out with us right now. But uh, if Apocalypse has any questions or any of our lurkers have questions, uh, then then uh, this is your opportunity. Um, It doesn't even have to be about plants. Just ask us anything. We're here for a few more minutes. It's true. I mean, I would prefer it to be about plants, but like knock yourself out. (laughs) Uh, Well, I can... uh see if we've got i'm not sure if we've got someone to raid after this too so while we're waiting i can kind of take a look Mm -hmm. and see trying to think if i have any questions for you while i'm here because i'm like what what have i been thinking about with plants um like i guess one thing that i've had to think about a little bit and i don't you know i don't know if this is the same with other kinds of plants but with like the herbs i've had to think a little bit about like companion planting and what's okay to plant next to something else and like what's not i don't you know do you have any thoughts on that i don't you know i don't grow i've only ever heard that with like food plants and but i don't never grown food i would love to know what you know about it like what do you what do you companion plant? Um, so I yeah, there's like a weird. It's kind of like I feel like you're playing like a puzzle game a little bit because you're just a little bit. There's a little bit of like this one can go by that one, but don't really plant it by this one because this and this and this. And it's like oregano. The plants like the root structure goes really widespread, and so you don't want to like plant that next to the you know something that like needs that root space and um like. I have like my rosemary next to my peas because that was supposed to be good. Um, 
And, you know, also just... knives next to peas works well. Yeah. Well, basically, you want to put something there that's going to be a little stinky or and or bug repellent in nature because oh. of the fact that the peas will attract pests for sure. So... Um, oh, really? And so far, it's been successful. Like, I, you know, like I've said, it's it's a new setup out there right now. But like, yeah, so far, so good. So, yeah. But that, I would say that is one that if anybody is doing starting on that is worth researching because I like it took a long time to be like, is this one OK with this? Is it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You could definitely make a whole game out of that. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I've never thought about that. I was wondering if it was like maybe if plants need two different nutrients from the soil you wouldn't want to put them in there to compete i mean that's probably true about some too yeah why not i mean i imagine there are some where they're they're definitely competing for nutrients i know obviously Mm -hmm. like you know with us we've got like it's like a big long a couple long cedar boxes that they're all in and so it's like watering wise i kind of am just watering the two plants on the end and the rosemary doesn't get uh, it's just getting its water from them because mm. otherwise it would be overwatered if I just watered the whole row. So, mm. yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That's pretty cool. Uh, Apocalypse is sad. I hear there's something that'll keep mosquitoes away that I need to plant near my deck. Hmm. I don't know what that could be. I mean, there are like a lot of the herb plants are good at bug repellent properties, like the rosemary and and that kind of thing are good for that. I don't know if mosquitoes specifically though, so I'm not sure. Maybe it's the the Drosera, Drosera, Drosera. Maybe it's little. Have a have a whole thing of like little carnivorous plants eating mosquitoes around your your deck. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Honestly, I if it hadn't sent like so much dang work, I would love to grow like carnivorous plants, but it, they seem like they would be their whole own project. Yeah, they, it seems like I don't know everything I've read. I'm like, I think my cat is easier than carnivorous plants. Right? Yeah, that's how what I've understood too. Uh, yeah, and I oh yeah, do the jump is suggesting mint or citronella bonfires. Yeah, bonfires might do it. Cedar smoke maybe. Um, uh, that's not really a plant though. Um, I mean, cedar mint, is, but not, yeah. Mint is so funny because every time I've tried to grow mint inside, it's died. And I've always been like, I can have various plants from various tropical nations in my house and the mint is dying. That's so weird. Yeah. I don't know why that is. Yeah. Mint makes sense though. Mint definitely is another one of those like potent, potent smelling and potent, um, affecting plants. So that mm-hmm. kind of makes sense. And it's not hard to grow outside. Mm. So like you could put it around your deck. I would just, I think the big question there would be, how do you keep it from like taking over? True. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of those herby type plants are very, they like to take up a lot of space. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Get big. Yeah. Uh... Well... Any more plant questions, anybody? Or are we good to go? We can go visit someone. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna roll that up maybe. Uh who we got? Who we got? Who we got? Uh we have got if my thing will load. Hmm. So we've got uh Oh, Dragon Age Inquisition with Rage X and, uh, and, or Rage, I guess Rage Cage Rugger. I, I always read the X's because I forget sometimes that people use them as spaces between their names. And so I'm always in my head, it's like Rage X Cage X Rugger, but I think it's just Rage Cage Rugger. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so, um, yeah, I think we're going to probably pop over there, um, and maybe go visit them. So I'm going to queue it up. Um, and yeah, we'll do a quick little exit if anybody's, uh, but before I hit start, I'll, I'll double check one more time, see if we got anything. Uh, I just do the jump says everything hates mint and that's why humans like it. We love a strong flavor. That is true. And we also, that's often the same thing with like garlic and those, uh, things like that, cinnamon and cloves and all of those things, because there are a lot of things that don't love those things. Yeah, it was fun to chat plants, Apocalypse. 
Good times. Super fun. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to send us off in the direction of rage. And so go say hi. Watch some Dragon Age Inquisition. Uh, if you want to join us next time, we will be um, playing Tachia. Uh, and that will be Joe. And then on uh, May 23rd, that'll be on the 19th. And on May 23rd, we've got nail art with Jesse. So just going to do some nail art, which I know nothing about. So that's that's awesome. Um, thank you so much for, for joining Bye. me today, Julie. <laughs> Thanks Bye. for having me. Bye. I love talking about plants. Bye. Yeah.